there all the way down there. Been gone, we? Right. It's been there for about two weeks now. Ah, I don't know why. Have <laughs> got a family somewhere? Yeah. I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think it lives near the water when it comes down at night. Yeah. It's really camouflaged. Let's just think there. Literally, well, it was there. A um, rat snake hunt bite. And then we looked at the ground and there was... <laughs> We can actually thank that rainwater for all the crystals that we see forming down here. And the ceiling and floor, it's all formed by that rain. And now, contrary to the name itself, Lake Cave is an underground stream. The stream is fed from a wetland area about three kilometres towards the rear of the cave. Flows so underground from there, and that stream is created the actual cavern itself. So it is the road of the limestone. Now in saying that, there is quite a bit of water in the cave. There's no handrail on the side of the water. Last 20 years, the water has been receding out of the cave. So this was our conservation team's best efforts to keep some water in the cave. Now, up until about a month ago, the water sat about 10 centimeters below that black lining. Until a month ago, it started filling up all of a sudden, out of nowhere. And now it's the fullest it's been in about 20 years. So you guys, time to visit very well. Yeah. I'll explain why it dropped and why it's filled back up a bit later on. But the reason we didn't want it to dry up completely is because in this water there's 12 different species of stargo fauna. That's like a type of microscopic cave organism. It's so like a shrimp, it's lime, it's see through. And six of those species are only found here. So they've evolved specifically for this climate. Found nowhere else in the world. So even though they're so tiny, they're still pretty unique, an important part of the yeah. ecosystem. Hence the tarp just to keep some habitat for them, stop them from going extinct. They're called straws. So if you did snap one off, you could drink milk straight through it. Please don't get in trouble. Yeah. Hollow <laughs> on the inside. And they're the first fib crystal that we get forming down here in the cave. So they're formed by that rainwater. Now when that rain is rain falling through the atmosphere, it's collecting carbon dioxide. Then lands on the forest floor, starts making its way down through the limestone. And on that journey down, it's dissolving calcium carbonate. Eventually makes its way to the ceiling. The droplet hangs there for a moment. It releases that carbon dioxide. A reaction takes place between the CO2 and the calcium carbonate. And a small ring of calcite crystal forms around the water droplet. The calcite is the crystalline form of limestone. All the crystal down here is calcite crystal. Water falls away. The crystal stays stuck to the ceiling. This process keeps happening and slowly the straws form. Fully supported by just these two points in the ceiling. Now this is the largest known suspended table in the world, and it's one of two. So there's only one other that's known of. Pretty unique, pretty mm -hmm. of nature. Hey? Mm -hmm. So we've got the two columns, and then this base is made up of a formation known as flowstone. So flowstones formed a little bit differently. Instead of the water dripping straight down vertically, it's actually seeping in the wall of the cave, running over the existing limestone, Positive calcite crystal as it goes, and in turn, leaving behind flowstone. So, this hasn't just defied gravity and flown over here. What's happened is about six or seven hundred thousand years ago, when that whole piece has started to form, the limestone floor was up here. 
at the height of the boardwalk. So the whole thing was initially formed on the floor. Now over the years, the water in the stream is slightly acidic, so the pH of around 3. That started to dissolve the limestone. The limestone is dissolved quite easily because it's very porous material, whereas calcite, it's crystal, so it's very non-porous. So the floor is dissolved before the crystal has had a chance to. The floor is dropped and the whole thing has become suspended. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah. Like the floor was there and now it's gone? Yeah. So it's caves active, means it's still growing. And if it's dripping, it's growing. So the reason this area here is the most active is due to the limestone above us in the ceiling. It's less dense than everywhere else, which means the water can pass through much easier, which has resulted in quite a lot of crystal. Mm. You guys see this fast dripping salad quite here? We've named it, of course. Any guesses on what it's called? What did you guys call it? Drippy. Drippy, good one. We call it the super fast dripping salad type. <laughs> <laughs> it drips so quick at a rate of around 44 drops a minute, every single minute. It's actually stunted its own growth. So that water is not hanging there long enough for the reaction to take place. So no more crystal can grow. As a result though, pretty cool stalagmite forming below. <laughs> Still that brain coral here. Yeah. So this is called rimstone. So when this little pool at the top spills over, then the water cascading down, it's running over striations in the rock. Each when the crystal, sorry, each time it passes over one of those striations, it deposits a bit more crystal until eventually they form dams. And now each time water goes into those dams each crystal in the dam wall, whereas the dams slowly form our rimstone. So you can see all this through here, it's all rimstone. There's a big piece back there. There's one of those fast drippy static types feeding it. You guys see the kangaroo and the emu? Yeah. Crystal. Oh. Little goose in the hair. Oh, yeah. Two people watching on the right. Kind of cool hair. Yeah. Now this area of the cave is growing a bit quicker than average. So remember the average I spoke about before? One centimetre every hundred years? Mm -hmm. Got a bit of a marker to show just how fast this area is growing. So more water means oh, average gets high. Can you guys see this straw with the mark on it? Mm -hmm. So that mark was made by a cave guide's candle back in 1954. So in about 70 years, it's grown around four centimetres, which is about six times faster than the average I spoke about before. It weighs about 5.3 tonnes. It's pretty heavy. It's very dense material, calcite crystal. So concrete weighs about 2.4 tonnes per cubic metre, whereas calcite crystal weighs about 2.7. It's denser than concrete. Now, despite being so dense, it's actually quite soft. So on most scale of hardness, Fingernail is 2.5, almond is a 10, mm. almond being the hardest on the scale. Calcite crystal comes in around a 3, so it's so much harder than the fingernail. Now I've got a bit of a theory to come up with. On that same scale, the tooth enamel is a 6. So in theory, you could take a bite out of the suspended table. <laughs> wow. Wow. What do dragons do? They're very quiet. This is a real dragon. Speculating, they feel like at some point his candle may have got dripped on, and he would have been left in total darkness. So they're heading up out of the cave. Do you guys want to lead the way? Yeah. 